Welcome to Real Estate Focus. Our topic is architecture. With me here today is Alan Kearney. Alan is the president and founder of A. Kearney Architects. Welcome. Thank you, Calvin. Thank you for being here. Um, so, um, as an architect, uh, what is your design philosophy? Um. I'm not sure if there's any one strict philosophy mm -hmm. with design, but um, I would suggest that listening and communication skills are important in any mm -hmm. design approach um, when dealing with any client or any project. So uh, right. um, that's critical. And then using um, sort of a, a cohesive way of determining um, the needs of the client, mm -hmm. I guess, would be important. So, right. And that can go in many different directions. Right. My philosophy, I guess, would be less is more, sort of, um, and that's just true with not just architecture, but sort of a life um, kind of a rule. I think right. in today's society, we sort of tend to collect a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and then we need to add on to our homes in order to mm -hmm. house this stuff. So um, right. it's, uh, it's a little cleaner and um, better for all involved, I think, if we can sort of use the space that mm -hmm. the house has, as mm -hmm. opposed to tending to just add on instinctively to sort of uh, maybe keep up with the Joneses or something like that. So. Right. So basically, your philosophy has to do with uh, contemporary design or modernism, if, if you will. Yes, certainly. Yeah. That's yeah. where my leanings yeah. would go, right. sort right. of um, okay. in, the, yeah. in the Mies van der Rohe code of less is right. more sort of uh, yeah. mantra. That's right. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Right. Having Coming from uh, architectural background, I, I know exactly what you're saying. So oh, nice. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, in terms of architects, why? Well, I mean, who are your ac favorite architects or uh, idol, if you will? I That's mean, another tough one. Favorites yeah. to pick one, <laughs> I guess. But um, yeah. the building next door here, the mm -hmm. Crane Library, yep. Henry Hobson Richardson mm -hmm. um, designed yep. that in the That's late right. 1800s. Right. And that's a classic. That's a jewel of a building. Right. Um, so that certainly stands out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that was influenced a lot of... Um, mm -hmm sort of a Japanese uh, mindset when he mm -hmm. did those eyelid dormers, which is right, right. which was very um, cutting edge at the time. Right. And um, some more modern day architects today, Oando, mm -hmm. um, yep. is um, right. a modernist. Um, right. Frank Lloyd Wright, of course, Frank very Lloyd Wright. influential. Yeah, uh, he was the uh, American master, if you will. Yeah, yeah right. certainly, so, and I think he was voted the Mm -hmm. Number one architect right, of right. all time in the United right. States. The waterfall. That's one of the yeah falling water. Buildings. Yes, yeah. yeah. The full water. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, it's That's beautiful. Right. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, and my favorites are, you know, um, Le Corbusier. You know, I am Pay. I'm, I'm more towards the uh, contemporary design. You know, architecture, if you will. Clean lines. Uh, and also, you know, the constructivism as well. Uh, Frank Gehry. So that's one of my uh, favorite architects. Well, yeah, yeah. Frank yeah. Gehry huge um, yeah. influence on right, many architects. Right. His buildings right. are just standalone pieces of art sometimes, right, like right. Bilbao, the uh, museum in Spain. Right. It's, a, it's a destination in, point in, now. In so. MIT as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. right. Yeah. They're, um, they're just very kinetic. Right. Very exciting. Right. And people yeah. go out of their way to see them. And That's right. Yeah. You always, you know, find some, some new shapes, you know, by walking around the building or inside the building. He has a lot of fun yeah. with architecture, yeah. and yeah. that's, that can be missing yeah. sometimes. So right. That's important. right. So, yeah, those, those, are the, so those are the architects that, uh, you know, if you're interested in architecture, you know, you should check them out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Google them. Google them. Yeah, there you go. Famous architects, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's right. And also, you know, um, different architectural styles as well, in which you can Google as well. So Exactly. Yeah. Right. And uh, now, what does your firm specialize in terms of uh, uh, architecture? Not so much those huge museum projects. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More sort of uh, mm -hmm. down-to-earth projects. A lot right. of residential. Yeah. Right. Uh, I've done banks and some restaurants mm -hmm. and those kinds of things, but mm -hmm. mostly... Um, Residential mm -hmm. and uh, mostly additions to existing homes. Right. Do you also um, specialize in interior design as well? I wouldn't say I specialize in it, mm -hmm. but it's important mm -hmm. as part of the, the the entirety of the project. So it's right. Um, right. So you work they, they, they work together. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Structural engineering. But you can have a lot of fun with interior design with yeah. with the colors and the materials. Right. And, and, right. and on a budget too. So and decoration as well. Yeah. 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 Right. So it's good. And um, what is AIA stand for? AIA is the American Institute of Architects. Right. Yeah. So you have to be registered with AIA to become an architect. It's sort of the other way around. You you, okay. you can be an AIA affiliate or a member mm -hmm. without becoming an architect. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So typically, uh, to become an architect, you go to uh, five years of 
school. School. Yeah. A bachelor's right. degree. A bachelor's of architecture mm -hmm. is a, a five-year degree, and then you um, intern for at least three years. It was three years when I was doing it, mm -hmm. but um, right. you need to work under the um, apprenticeship. Apprenticeship yeah. of an architect. Yeah. Thank right. you. Right. And, um, That's right. Yeah. And then you're eligible to take the licensing exams, mm -hmm. which are mm -hmm. nine parts. Right. That's over right. the course of maybe four days. Yeah, which is a very tough exam. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I flunked so. it many times. <laughs> well, I mean, that's part of the process, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perseverance. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, with that being said, um, it, it is important to hire or working with uh, an architect. And so, when people try to um, at least consult with an architect or to hire an architect, what kind of questions that they have to ask or what, uh, what information that they need to get from an architect? Um. Well, it is important to work with an architect. It's, mm -hmm. it's, no matter what your 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 needs are, or background, or background, yeah, right, certainly. Right. Yeah. And um, and there are really no projects that are too small to mm -hmm. even consult with an architect. Right. Uh, I right. think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But it's a it's a very personal relationship. It's, yeah. you, um, right. you communicate with each other, and you sort of right. um, create a, your your dream. Clients many times have dreams, and they mm -hmm. want their home to sort of match their dreams right, and right. many times there's budgets and, yep. and restrictions and these right. kinds of things but mm -hmm. if you can sort of listen and um, help the client attain as many of their dreams as possible mm -hmm. it's sort of a win-win it's, mm -hmm. it's there's nothing better than to realize after a project's completed mm -hmm. that it really resonates with the owner mm -hmm. and they're happy and they can raise their family in a nice environment and mm -hmm. everyone can sort of just mm -hmm. groove on that so basically design evolve around personal tastes or personal preferences, if you will. Certainly, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. and everyone has their own, you know, mm -hmm. um, subjective personal preferences. Mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. Right, right. And yeah. many times the architecture can assist with that, mm -hmm. um, guiding mm -hmm. the homeowner to realize, you know, what their needs are, what their, but they think their needs are, and kind of mm -hmm. examining those needs and mm -hmm. finding out just Mm -hmm. what they can and can't do within a budget or within the site restraints or those mm -hmm. kinds of things too. Right, okay. Well, good to know. And as an architect, when you work with a client or clients, um, what are your duties as an architect? I mean, do you in charge of the project from beginning to the end? Or? It, it varies many times, no. but um, uh, let's see. The Just a simple project. <coughs> yeah, a simple yeah. project. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly design and mm -hmm. establishing budgets and yeah. um, and those kinds of things, right, and then working right. within those, you know, budgets and restraints, but then uh, guiding the homeowner through the construction process mm -hmm, in many mm -hmm. ways involves the contractors, and mm -hmm. they may have someone in mind, mm -hmm. um, or they may need to um, mm -hmm. find a, a, a decent contractor, mm -hmm. and that becomes a different relationship. And then mm -hmm. there's a there's three parties involved, and right. ideally we are, we all communicate properly mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. for the owner's um, mm -hmm. gain. Right. right. Yeah. So. Um, for most of the consumers um, that are not aware of the uh, design process, I mean, what is the scope of work? I mean, is that involved in within a project, like all the responsibilities, or I mean, what, the scope of work of the project is, is like um, uh, all the steps of from A to Z. Is that right? Yeah, yeah it, it can right? be. It can yeah. be every portion of mm -hmm. of the project from the initial. Conceptual mm -hmm. drawings right on through to mm -hmm. when it's um, you, you're Completion. opening the door and you're right. walking into right. a brand new structure. I see. And it can yeah. be bits and pieces within that framework too. Right. So, um, right. I see. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And it, many times it depends on on budget again, mm -hmm. and, um, right. Right. and and many times again the owner has a relationship with the contractor, and and that can be a good thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can be a bad thing if mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. things go sour. So it's good to have an architect involved right. to make sure right. that. Um, Right. They're being um, cared for properly. The owner. So basically, if if a tenant, well, I'm sorry, not a tenant, but if a homeowner or future homeowner um, would come to you and say, "Alan, I want to uh, design and build a a dream home." Yeah. Um, so when do we enter the picture? I mean, are you the first person right. who enters the picture. Right. That's the that's the, yeah, yeah. That's okay. the first step. Hiring okay. the architect. Right. Yeah. You do the design, um, and then. It will follow to work with structural engineer, mm -hmm. contractors. Exactly right. Subcontractors like electrician, plumber. The structural component yeah. and the architectural component work hand in hand. hand so in hand, yeah. um, right. they, they need to kind of work together. I see. And then the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, and those kinds of 
mm-hmm. engineering disciplines come in right. later. Right. Right. But they're all sort of melded in at the same time. But structurally right. and architecturally, those need to work together. I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because of so many sort of restrictions, right, especially right. with the new codes, yeah. and then the energy code needs to be factored in and, right. and um, mm-hmm. insulating values and those right. kinds of things. So right. there's a lot of code work, a lot of site preparation work, a lot mm-hmm. of zoning, conservation, a lot of questions that need to be answered right out of the gate mm-hmm. uh, at the conception mm-hmm. of a, of a, of a um, yeah. right. problem. So basically, I think the first stage of the design is um, having an architect and also the structure engineer because when you design something, if it doesn't functional, then you know and exactly. It, exactly. it doesn't work. You know, right? So Sometimes you want, it comes clients want a huge volume of space, and yeah. it just becomes yeah. very. Um, uh-huh. I see. Yeah, it's almost impossible sometimes to right. make that happen. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that that, that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, in terms of uh, different style of, of homes and uh, and, and, and design, um, I like you to uh, talk about uh, different style of homes, if you will. Okay. Yeah. So we're looking at a um, a gambrel sort of a shingle style home mm-hmm. cottage uh, with a widow's walk mm-hmm. wraparound porch, beautiful little house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, this this style usually appear in New England areas, right? Center yeah. entrance colonial, yeah. right? Right, yeah. classic. Yeah. So those are the um, the the pretty traditional style, yeah. you know, that certainly that you you see around New England areas. And the window style like that. that's a six over one. That's right. the window pattern. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this 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 home looks very conformity as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very organized in terms very of very balanced, yeah, very yeah. symmetrical, right? Very right. pleasing to the eye. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the next one, um, this Again, is colonial. This one. Yeah, yeah, colonial with uh, gable dormers. Right. The center entrance, nice. Now, do you call this oversized colonial? I would say that's yeah. yeah that's an right. oversized colonial. Right. Yeah. That's for one of those like wealthy consumer, I guess. Yeah. That's a lot, of, a lot of square footage there. <laughs> yeah. So the next one, yeah, floor plan. So how do you design a floor plan from the beginning? Do you, I mean, what technique do you use? Um, the plan is important be- mm-hmm. because there are constraints typically built into how big the plan can be based right. on setbacks and those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So then you want adjacencies to, f- you want to factor in adjacencies, so living areas and dining rooms are right. uh, adjacent to each other mm-hmm. and the garage wants to come through a mudroom, right. maybe a laundry area, mm-hmm. you want the front entrance to be located just the way it should be, and you want the mm-hmm. light to sort of come through the home mm-hmm. properly, and mm-hmm. you have to consider the topography. So, all of these factors uh, come into play when you start the floor plan, right? And that's sort of the first step. And then you marry the floor plan into the elevations. Mm-hmm. So window locations. There you go. Thank you. Right. Yeah, um, so, yeah. Have to sort of you know you want them to be thoughtful and mm-hmm. um, and right. and then want the proportions to be exactly right or right. as close to that as you can get. And, right. Um, Okay. That's that's the fun of it all. That's the um, that's the challenge is to you know yeah to you know listen to the owner get their programmatic needs how many mm-hmm. bedrooms how many children how many bathrooms mm-hmm. and and, and um, work with the budget and create mm-hmm. um, these drawings right so so each floor plan has to be functional in ter- in terms of space wise and also how this how the rooms are being connected yes yeah. always certainly functional yeah. and and the floor plan doesn't say it all either because that's just one that's just a two dimensional Mm-hmm. You know, interpretation and, mm-hmm. and what, what's missing in the floor plan is the the volume, mm-hmm. um, and you right. can have a lot of fun with ups and downs and different ceiling planes, and, mm-hmm. and you know that doesn't show up on a, on a standard floor plan. But right. it, it has to be considered as part of the uh, okay. design approach. Right. And so, uh, in terms of uh, technology-wise, uh, when you when you draw up floor plans or uh, blueprints or blackprints, if you will. Yep. Um, what kind of technology do you use? I mean, you don't you don't use hand nowadays, I, right? I do. I like to sketch. Oh, I, I like to put my ideas down on paper. Right. Um, right. In, you know, tactile. Sketch wise. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, sketch right. wise. Yeah. And then I don't know. I can just see it. I can respond to it. It's all right there. I can touch it. It feels right, good. Right. Right. And right. then it goes to the CAD. The and CAD. Then, okay. Yeah. Then yeah. The, right. So then yeah. there's the computer aided drawings. Yeah. Um, right. And they're just cleaner and right. more accurate. Yeah. And, um, right. Do you, do you, I mean, did you recall, I do recall that uh, when I was in, uh, in school, I mean, I was, you know, using hand drafting, if you will. Yeah. So, yeah, because. Uh, I still have a drafting board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, I mean, it was a lot of work, though. I mean, 
when when you when you did something wrong, I mean, you got to embrace, you know, the half of. You didn't want to do something blueprint. wrong. That yeah. was the thing. You didn't want to do it wrong. <laughs> That's right. So you got it right the first you gotta time. You got to be neat and organized as well. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but now, I mean, with the AutoCAD and stuff like that, it's so convenient and less well, less time consuming. It's well. funny you mentioned that because yeah. um, I found that when AutoCAD was starting to, be, you know, when it mm -hmm. first came on board, mm -hmm. it. Um, you can, you can make a mistake and mm. you can easily erase it. Yeah. Mm. And so mistakes tend to tend, they tended to happen more often. Oh yeah. Because yeah, they were no so easily yeah. remedied. Yeah. Whereas when, if back in the day, right? Yeah, yeah. When I was drawing <laughs> by hand, you didn't want to make a mistake because it, uh, right. That's right. you didn't want to erase anything. But it, you know, by, by using hand drafting, I mean, uh, I think, I think um, you know, for personal, personal preference wise, I mean, very good techniques though. Yeah. yeah, it's an art yeah. form. I always it felt it, it was yeah. an art form. Right, yeah. right. So everyone had their own style. Oh yeah, and you had to sort of create an office style, and you, everyone had to sort of work together to create. That's right. Because yeah. other people would be working on drawings, and you right. didn't want their style to conflict with yours, right. and so sort of everyone could be one a homogenous kind of drawing. Style. That's right. That's yeah. right. So uh, in terms of um, um, uh, what, how do you how do you define this? How do you define conformity? Uh, in balance in architecture, I know that uh, you know, like like that. I mean, how do you find balance and balance? In, in, in yeah, conformity? That's, balance is important. There's so many ways to create balance mm -hmm. without just providing symmetry. Symmetry is the yeah, symmetry. very yes. balance. It's, that's right. It's equal. Yes. And that's that's a yeah. given. We like that. The we like we respond well to that. That's right. Yeah. But the right. trick is to sometimes the, create balance without symmetry. Right. So th this house here, this is a gambrel, mm -hmm. and it's very balanced within right. the roof line, then you yes. have an offset entrance, right. which mm -hmm. is visually m just more approachable. It's mm -hmm. not so symmetrical, right. but it has a nice balance to it, yeah. I think. I yeah. don't know where that is, but it's yeah. a nice, right. I think it's a nice yeah. balanced home. And this is Garrison, Garrison. yeah, yeah. Right. very, right. Um, you know, a lot of volume, a lot of square footage. Right, um, right, yeah. And, um, and also the next one is, um, would you call that? <coughs> this, this is the. What uh, would you call that? I don't know. Um, that's a, that's a anywhere home, anywhere USA. Any right. Neighborhood kind of. You know, you've got it's <laughs> garage it's heavy. It's, it's, it's I wouldn't say that. Yeah, yeah, contemporary maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But so. it just does the you know the garage door is screaming at you and it's right. It's, right. Um, it's just like you know coming coming towards you the garage is I mean. Uh, yeah, and, like, and we're you know we all drive our cars and our cars yeah. are very important. But right. It's, right. It's better I think if you can not make it so obvious that yeah, the, you right. know, the garage is right there. That's right. That's right. Come around. Yeah. This is a sketch of uh, uh, a different, uh, it looks like, you know, uh, garrison or something like that. Yeah, it looks like I would say it's a sort of a cottagey yeah. style, right. um, craftsman style. Yeah. And um, there's a little human, you know, next to the door. Little scale human the scale. person. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Little trellis yeah. uh, right. covered. And that's what you do, right? At the beginning of the This is what I, this process. is like a hand sketch, and yeah, that's kind right. of, yeah, that's yeah, where I right. find my comfort level. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this one here is. Some mansarded Mansa. colonial, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're yeah. around points. I've seen a lot of uh, those styles in New England uh, areas. Yeah. And uh, they, very, they were very popular in the old days. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, it was like a Queen Anne style. Yeah. As a tutor. Yeah. yeah. You have seen, I've seen a lot of this. Uh, Quincy has in a lot of Quincy too. areas, yeah. Exactly, that's right? right? Yes, on Adams Street. Yes. Yeah, right, that's right. Especially in the Quincy Adam areas. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. That's a, a Greek revival, classic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. nice proportions. Right. And this uh, Race Ranch. Race Ranch, right? yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. My first house. Right. Or my second house, actually. Right. So, uh, those are the pictures that uh, we want to convey to uh, the audiences. Now, in terms of design wise, um, Coming from architectural background, now, um, now when you design a home, do the style itself has to be in conformity with other home styles around the area? Same thing with buildings. If you it will. doesn't have to be, but it mm -hmm. wants to blend in with the neighborhood. It wants right, to be right. um, thoughtful mm -hmm. to its surroundings and thoughtful yeah. to the house itself. You don't want to design an addition to a house that mm -hmm. just is glaringly obvious. You want mm -hmm. to, uh, the goal is to create an addition that looks like it's been there forever. Right. That's, those right. are the best uh, end results. So, right. And that right. tends to be in keeping with the neighborhood mm -hmm. and, and, um, and the scale. So mm -hmm. um, those are important factors. Right. So in terms of research, I know that uh, each design has to do with research. So for example, if, if a client would come to you and say, Alan, I want to um, design this building or uh, a house that looks similar to, you know, to surrounding properties or um, it has my own taste, 
but in connection with other properties. I mean, what kind of research do you do? I mean, I know that uh, people went to the libra library or um, you know other resources to dig out information um, to find style or type of materials mm -hmm. that mix in with other neighboring homes and, and also match the, um, the client's taste and expectations as well. Right, that's yeah. again why people should hire an architect yeah. and right. because that's yeah. what we do. We, we, we do the research, mm -hmm. we, um, we work with the owner mm -hmm. and we, we just create a wish list and ideally mm -hmm. they are open enough to suggest what they want. Many times you can tear articles out of magazines mm -hmm. and it's a very visual field so mm -hmm. um, a, a, a picture can, can help tremendously and you can right. then take that and, and many times the, they're, they're tearing out very similar mm -hmm. um, images. Right, of right. columns or porches yeah. or windows mm -hmm. and, and then you know what they want so then you can assemble that information and mm -hmm. all that you sort of you determine the knowns you want to determine all of the various knowns mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you can so mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and then that just helps the process mm -hmm. coalesce into a into a, a brand new dream home mm -hmm. so um, mm -hmm. and that should conform to the neighboring structures that you know you want right. something that's so far but many times um, you can you can still have a, a modern home within a sort of a traditional setting, and, mm -hmm. and it's not the worst thing in the world. And they can somehow mm -hmm. balance each other too. So I see. So in terms of uh, design, I mean, a regular home can hire an architect, right? It doesn't have to be like a big project or a high end home or a luxury no, home, nothing, if you will. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. yeah. So basically, the the design ranges from small to the biggest, from you know the regular home to you know the high end ones. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Anything yeah. and and. Right. Um, it's all important, and there's no such thing as a small project. Any project mm -hmm. is big to that particular client. If someone's adding on a garage with a room above or a mm -hmm. deck out the back, that's mm -hmm. important to them, and it's, they're going to spend a lot of money on that on that endeavor. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so it's right. important on many levels. So right. it's not just uh, the wow factor that mm -hmm. you know architects sometimes tend to gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. It's it's just the it's pleasing any individual mm -hmm. client, I mean, right. solving their needs. So. In terms of permits, I mean, do you pull permits on behalf of the clients? Architects typically don't. You don't? It's where okay. the contractor gets involved oh, the because there's licensing yeah. involved, right. there's insurance okay. forms and yeah. those kinds of things. Okay. So, um, But we assist through the, the permitting process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's a moving target within the, the, the various uh, towns. Mm -hmm. And every town has its own sort of process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So basically, you, after you draw the, uh, the blueprint, set of blueprints, yep. you just give the set of blueprints to the contractor who's going to build a home, and then the, let the contractor pull the permits. That's typically how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. I see. Yep. Okay. And he he has to assign a price for that renovation of that new home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the permit, the fee of the permit is, is dependent on the on a percentage of the price of the uh, renovation. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that mm -hmm. and that begins the the mm -hmm. process. Right. And in terms of um, areas of concentration, I mean, where do you concentrate most in terms of helping clients to either build, um, you know. Um, repair homes and renovate homes or expand uh, their homes? Yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's no one yeah. right answer, right. I guess. Uh, right. yeah. it, it, every, every client is different and right. it's, a, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's just guiding, I think. Mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. I've done this enough. I know, the, I know how to, I, I can sometimes see things that they can't and mm -hmm. not in a bad way, it's just that I've done it and um, right. I can see the the various opportunities when right. they arise, right. and I can see the, the like some an owner many times would want to expand mm -hmm. out the back, and right away I can see that there's wetlands out there, and you can't yeah. go within a buffer zone of a mm -hmm. wetlands district, and so mm -hmm. and if they don't get that guidance at the beginning, they mm -hmm. may pursue it, and they could get wrong information and, and mm -hmm. go down the line, only mm -hmm. to find out that yeah. they can't, in fact, do what they're right. hoping to do. So right. again, that knowledge attaining it those knowns, you know, establishing the knowns at the beginning, all of them, as many as you can, mm -hmm. tend to minimize any headaches that come later on the process. Right, because you see, you see things uh, through a different set of eyes. Yeah. And, and also coming from various experiences as an architect. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. exactly right. right. So it's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like any, any, you know, profession, anyone who has experience right. doing something, you want them on your side helping right. you through the process. Right. And many times it can save money. Yeah. Um, right. Hiring an architect can be beneficial in, mm -hmm. in the cost savings. It sounds counterintuitive, but it. Uh, I see. Yeah. It, if right. you uh, meet with the owner and you assemble a set of plans, mm -hmm. documents, blueprints, mm -hmm. 
and um, you then distribute them to various contractors, maybe mm -hmm. three or four or five, and you mm -hmm. get bids, and the mm -hmm. homeowner can see and meet contractors and select the contract that they sort of connect with, mm -hmm. or maybe the price is the best price, or maybe mm -hmm. it's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. But it's all real, it's in real time, and mm -hmm. it's not just working with one contractor mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and, and hoping for the best. Right, right, okay, so, um, and so, I mean, do you like to work with um, um, projects that are more um, commercial focus or residential focus? I, a little both. I mean, oh, they're, yeah. they're both challenging and yeah. interesting in their own ways. Right, um, right. Different um, yeah. process. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I do, I enjoy meeting with people and enjoy solving their problems. It kind of gives me a kick. Yeah, um, right, right. Well, being, being, being an architect, Part of it is, is, is solving people's problems and also meeting their needs as well. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> nice. It really is. At the, at the end, I, I've had clients come to me um, who I haven't seen in years, yeah. and, and and they'll thank me for an addition that happened. That's nice. That, yeah. yeah, it solved yeah. the problem. They didn't want to leave a neighborhood. They so Many times a client loves their home, right. but their family's growing, and they either need to move or renovate, and then you know, it's there's a budget involved. And, and the kids love the neighborhood, they love their friends, they don't want to move, so if you can add on to that home and um, let that family stay in that home, and it's just, it's kind of a nice feeling. Right, well the, the, the one kick that I got off uh, um, uh, architecture is that, uh, you know, you can see basically nothing with a piece of land and then start from scratch up until the completion of the project. I mean, it's like from turning um, into a realistic project from papers, you know, and yes. that's, that's what, you know, it's, great about It's kind of magical sure. when you think yeah, about yeah, it. You've yeah, got a clean right. slate yeah. and um, an idea of what might be. And right, then, um, right. If all right. goes well, it, it can yeah. be a very beneficial project to the community and to the owner right. and, you know, to all involved. Right, that's right. So, um, I mean, for those of you that might be interested in becoming an architect in the future, I mean, what advice would you would you give uh, to most? That's a tough one. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, just a few, if you will. Like, if if they like, just uh, follow your passion. I guess yeah, would be right. critical. If if, yeah. if mm -hmm. you know, if it's something you'd like to do, I always like to draw. So yeah. and uh, I like to build. So those two right. went well together to become yeah. an architect. Right. And I had some help along the way, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah, you don't need either one of those skill sets either. Mm -hmm. it, but if you have a passion for. Um, I don't know, being thoughtful or helping or mm. just listening. It's, and patience it's, as well. Yeah, patience. Yeah, That's yeah. the other thing. It's very, yeah. Thank you. Because yeah. um, a lot of times we're rushing through right. projects right. And, and, and speed isn't always the answer. It's, and, right. and the, you know, it, you, the quicker you do something, the more money you save right. in theory. Right. But many That's times right. you rush and it, you lose in the end because. Right. And the process should be um, enjoyed. It should be something that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's if a teamwork, it's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it should, because right. you, you know, if, you, if you're doing a house or, mm -hmm. or a commercial project, but typically a house, it's your home, you're there a lot. Right, And it's, right. it's, um, it, it's your soul, it's part of right. your being, and, and um, you agree. shouldn't rush through that whole world. Now, do you have to go in math, I mean, to become an architect? No, people think that, <laughs> and I'm not, so. Uh, uh, okay, because. No, you I mean you <laughs> basic math skills, but. Yeah. Like algebra or, or yeah, geometry. trigonometry, yeah, I think that's was right. important, yeah, but yeah. um, right, right, but no, you don't need you to have a. I see. Other than you know, unless you know they want to become a structural engineer or something like that, then yeah, that's different, good, right? Yeah, or, yeah, or civil right. engineer, yeah. right? Certainly, right. That's but right. um, yeah, yeah, and you don't have to be good in English. I'm proving that right now. <laughs> well, good you're good. You're good. So yeah, let me put it this way. So, uh, yeah. With that being said, I uh, want to thank you so much for being on the show, and thank you for sharing. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, your information is, is very helpful to future homeowners, uh, current homeowners, or even, you know, future um, architects, I guess, huh? I guess, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Thank um, you, Calvin. You're welcome. Uh, with that being said, um, all habitants are involved in some sort of um, architecture, especially when it comes to architectural design of properties or homes. Architecture plays an important role in our daily lives, and architecture also provides um, a shelter for all humanities. And I want to thank you so much for being part of the show. See you next time.